This is Math 142. We're doing Section 6.6, .6 and we are going to uh, talk about the law of cosines and how to use it. So um, first thing I want to do is develop some thinking that will get us to the law of cosines. So I'm going to try and uh, find this missing side A in this triangle. And I'm going to do it in a way, not necessarily the way that we'll solve it every time, but a way that will get us to the law of cosines. So let me take this triangle two twelve three eighty eight that side's a eighty two point four degrees and um I notice I can't do law of signs on it you know law of signs was when I had a triangle and I was comparing a side to the angle opposite and I have a side um a side I'm trying to find in the angle opposite it but I don't have another angle to compare it to, you know, like if I knew this angle, I could go it over 3d8 or this angle sine of it over 212, but I don't have that. So I can't use law signs for this tool. So let me still try and solve it though. I'm going to drop this uh, altitude just like I've done before. And I'll call uh, this distance here X and this distance here Y. So X is just from here to here. And so some things that I notice about this right triangle is um, this X is adjacent to it. So if I were to go cosine of that 82.4 degrees, it would be X over 388. And if I multiply both sides by 388, 388 times cosine of 82.4 is X. So actually, like I know how long this X value is. It's just cosine of that. And I could get this y similarly, y is opposite that. So if I were to go sine of uh, 82.4, I would get y over 388. Multiply both sides by the 388. And you get that. So I actually know that length as well. So that's nice. I actually know those lengths right there and there. So now what I can do is I can concentrate on this right triangle that's here. And I know that uh, Pythagorean theorem tells me this side squared plus this side squared equals a squared. And this whole length is 212. So if I want this length right here, it must be 212 minus x. Right, that length's x. So 212 minus x would be that. So I know that, that a squared equals um, this y squared plus 212 minus x squared. But these are just lengths. Like why I know that what it is is a number. I know that it's 388 times sine of 82.4. And this x, I know that it's this. 388 times cosine of 82.4. So now if I'm using Pythagorean theorem, a squared equals this squared plus that squared. So that's just something I can put into my calculator. So let me do this. Uh, yep, I'm in degrees. Always a good thing to check. So parentheses, uh, 388 times the sine of 82.4 degrees. And I want to square that. And now, you know, if I square here, I'm only squaring the sine of 82.4 degrees. I have these, I have two sets of parentheses that I need to close off. So close them both off and then square it. And then that's going to be plus, uh, it was 212 minus 388 times the cosine of 82.4 degrees. And again, close off all those parentheses to square that. So I have one of the sides squared plus the other side squared gives me that. Now that's not my answer. That's not my, my a value because a squared is equal to that number. So I got to square root it. And I just emphasize that because that's a mistake that I see folks do a lot on assessments is they forget to square root it. So 416.81. Nice. So a would be about 
I think it was 416.81. That seems reasonable. Uh, if this is 388, this is 212, that's 82 degrees. I mean, that, that feels like it like it's reasonable. Now, if I had this type of triangle, notice like this type of triangle is different than that one. This is one where I'm trying to find this side, but I know this side and the angle between them. Right? I don't have the cross uh, information that I have for law of sines. So here's what I want to do now is I, I want to, I, I could solve this type of triangle this way every time. But I think that what I want to do is, I know what I want to do, is generalize it. So let me, let me do that. I have some, uh, some triangle with a side A and this angle A. And um, notice if I was doing this, like if this was a 10 instead of a 212, it would just been 10s here. Or if this was a 15, it would be 15. So what I'm doing is I'm generalizing this, this process with A's, B's, and C's. So I want to know A. And what would be nice if I could just go A squared equals B squared plus C squared. But it's not exactly that. There's some, some little fix, some little patch to the Pythagorean theorem because I don't have a 90 degree angle in here. So, well, I'm going to set it up the same way that I did before. There's that. And I have this distance X and this distance Y. And I know that um, cosine of A would be X over B, adjacent over hypotenuse. And I know that sine of A would be opposite over hypotenuse, Y over B. Multiply both sides by B. So X is b times cosine a, I'm going to multiply by b here, y is b times sine a. Notice it's the same thing I did here, but this was with, you know, specific values. There's my b, my 388, there's my cosine and my angle. And uh, just like before, I'm going to take advantage of the Pythagorean theorem here. Um, so I know that a squared would be y squared plus and now if this whole thing is C, and that's X, this would be C minus X. So whatever that length is squared. C is my 212. Two but now I know these values, or I do know them relative to B, C, and A. So this would be A squared equals Y squared would be B times sine A squared plus C minus X. C minus X is B cosine A. that. So now I could just kind of generalize it from here, know that this is always the case, plug in those values, but I'm going to clean it up a little bit because I have a goal to make it look more like the Pythagorean theorem. I think it's easier to remember. And right now I have both sine and cosine in my formula, and this is called the law of cosines. So maybe I'll be able to get it just in terms of cosines at all. I say maybe, like I don't know. I will be able to. So let's square these things. So um, if I square this, b times sine squared gives me b squared times sine squared. Because when I square it, b times sine, you know, times itself. These things are just all multiplied together. So that's a b squared, b times b, and sine times sine. And um, when we square sine and cosine, we write it like this. Just because then it's clear that you're you're um, squaring the output after you sign. Like if you write this, it's kind of arbitrary what's being squared. It's hard to tell. So that's why we do that notation. Um, next piece, I need to square this as well. So again, squaring something is multiplying by itself. So C times C is C squared. C times negative B cos A is negative B times C times cos A. And notice here I get the same thing again, negative B times C times cos A. So I have two of them, minus two B C cos A. And then this times this would be negative times the negative is positive B squared and cosine squared A. So this thing uh, multiplies out to c squared minus 2bc cosine a 
plus b squared cosine squared a. So let me clean this up a little bit. I have a squared equals, I've got this c squared all alone. I've got this b squared. Let me look at this, these two pieces right here. b squared sine a and b squared cosine squared a. So notice if I have b squared sine squared a plus b squared cosine squared a, and then I'll just bring the rest of it along. I'm just kind of rearranging the deck chairs here. In these two, I can factor out that b squared. They both have a b squared in common. So if I do that, b squared, and then I have sine squared a plus cosine squared a, and just that comes along. Again, like if you if you factor that, multiply that back in, b squared times sine squared, b squared times cosine squared. I just factored out the b squared. And I did that because this is a one. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one, All right? Think about that unit triangle. If this is cosine and this is sine, uh, Pythagorean theorem, cosine squared plus sine squared is one. So if that's just a one, a squared equals b squared plus c squared. There's my Pythagorean theorem-ish part. And here's my patch, minus 2bc cosine a. So in order to do this one, what I could have done is I could have gone, treat it like Pythagorean theorem, 388 squared plus 212 squared with a patch, because I don't have a 90 degree angle, so my patch would be two times one of the sides times the other side times cosine of the angle between them. And a squared equals that. So let me do that on my calculator. So 388 squared plus 212 squared. And then that Pythagorean theorem ish minus uh, two times one of the sides times the other side times cosine of the angle between them. Notice that's the same value I got going the other way. Uh, if I square root that, square root of the answer, I get that 416.81 again, which is that same answer. So this right here that we uh, that we just developed, that is the law of cosines. And let me write it write it out and then talk about it because it's kind of of. So here's what law of cosines tells me: if I know two sides and the angle between them, I can compare those to the side that's opposite it by using something that is Pythagorean theorem-ish. In other words, the side that's opposite is the sum of the square of the two sides. I'll just write it b squared plus c squared. So there's my Pythagorean theorem type thing with a patch minus two times the sides, sorry about that a, times cosine of the angle between them. Now the a, b, c, they're, they're, they're arbitrary. In other words, it does, this doesn't have to be side A, but they are, uh, they are relative. So if I want to find side B, notice what I'm going to use are the, the everything that's opposite it, the, the two sides and the angle between them. So B squared would be the sum of the squares of the other sides, A squared plus C squared, minus my patch, two times those sides, times the cosine of the angle that's between them. Similarly, if I'm looking for side C, I've got this. C squared would be the sum of the other sides, Pythagorean theorem-ish, minus my patch, two times the sides, times cosine of the angle between them. So, law of cosines, it is all about, again, um, if I have my triangle, the side I want to find compared to the other sides and the angle between them. So if I want to solve this for x, I know that x squared is going to be Pythagorean theorem-ish. 
and then minus my my patch because it's not a right angle so 2 times 53 times 75 2 times the angles times the cosine of the angle that's between them so as I put that into my calculator 53 squared plus 75 squared minus 2 times each of the sides so 2 times 53 times 75 times the cosine because it's log cosine of the angle between them now notice that is not the length that's the length squared so I'm going to square root that and it looks like I get about 35.06 let's do another one this is 40 degrees this is 10 this is uh, 18 and I want to find this side that I'll call a so I want to know that side so I'm going to use the uh, the two sides opposite in the angle between them so notice like this is a real specific setup when I use log cosines I need to be able to distinguish between using log cosines and log sines so a squared is 10 squared plus 18 squared it's Pythagorean theorem ish minus my patch 2 times 10 times 18 2 times the sides times the cosine of the angle between them so uh, 10 squared plus 18 squared minus 2 times 10 times 18 times cosine of the angle between them and again that's not my side length that is a squared so I'm going to square root that about 12.17 now I keep saying it's Pythagorean theorem with a with a fix let's say this is 90 degrees this is 3 and this is 4 and I want to find that length now um, first off if I didn't have a shaky triangle I would be more comfortable it's a little bit better um, since that's 90 degrees I know that that 3 squared plus 4 squared let's call that C is going to equal C squared what happens if I just shove this into the law of cosines so if I go let's see C squared is 3 squared plus 4 squared right because I'm trying to find that side I've got the angle between the two opposite sides minus 2 times 3 times 4 times the cosine of 90 degrees um, so this would be c squared equals 9 plus 16 minus 2 times 3 times 4 that's 12 uh, 12 times 2 is 24 cosine of 90 degrees what's the cosine of 90 degrees remember 90 degrees is straight up and cosine's width cosine of 90 degrees is 0 so this is a 0 so c squared equals why is it 16 squared it's already been squared 9 plus 16 so notice that even if it is a 90 degree angle log cosine takes care of it because cosine of 90 degrees is zero right if I go uh, cosine of 90 degrees it's zero that is going to make this thing that I'm calling a patch a zero so we could say it's a modification of the Pythagorean theorem or we could say it's just the Pythagorean theorem for any angle length whereas our version of it a squared plus b squared equals c squared is specifically for when that angle is 90 degrees all right so um, let's solve this triangle and by solve the triangle I mean find everything that we don't know so we know some side lengths uh, but we don't know any angle so how about we grab an angle let's let's look for angle a whoops <laughs> let's look for angle a and so I know that um, I have some relationship between these sides and that 5 in other words I know that that 5 squared is the same as 12 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 12 times 8 times the cosine of angle a great so let me do a little bit of work on this one I know it looks like I'm gonna have to use arc cosine along the way inverse cosine and now the nice thing about inverse cosine 
is inverse cosine will give me anything will give me values here to here remember that's what that's what arc cosine does um, and it will give me obtuse angles so I don't have to do any sort of checking or fixing like I do with lost signs whereas sine won't give me obtuse angles cosine will um, and it actually makes my my tool cleaner so let me deal with this for a sec 25 uh, 12 squared is 144 8 squared is 64 uh, 2 times 12 times 8 192 there's a really common mistake that folks make here um, so let me 25 144 plus 64 208 minus 192 times cosine of a do not fall for this trap be super careful what I'll see people do when they're solving this is they'll do this subtraction uh, 208 minus 192 but notice that 192 is multiplied by the cosine like I can't combine these if these two have to go together so if I'm solving this uh, first thing I'm going to have to do is subtract the 208 from both sides so 25 minus 208, negative 183. And now I have negative 192 times cosine of A. Then I would divide by the negative 192. You know, if you think of the cosine A just as like a, an X, if I had 208 minus 192X, you wouldn't combine those. You would subtract and then divide. It's the same, same sort of thing. So cosine of a is going to equal a negative divided by a negative is, is positive. So whatever 183 divided by 192 is. And I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not going to round it um, around the decimal. I can enter this whole thing into my calculator. Notice that's the ratio and I want the angle. So if I want the angle, I can inverse cosine the ratio. 183 over 192. Looks like about 17.6 degrees. So this would be about 17.6 degrees. And now if I want to find the other angles, uh, I can I can keep going from there. So like if I want to find, for example, this, this angle B, it's going to be this comparison. So I know that 8 squared would be 5 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times the sides times cosine of the angle between them. It's the same sort of game. Uh, 8 squared is 64. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10. Times 12 is 120. 25 plus 144. So then again from here, I'm not going to go 169 minus 120. Subtract 169 from both sides. Divide by 120, negative 120. And so um, that means if I go inverse cosine of that ratio, negative divided by negative is positive. I should get B, so 105 over 120. Twenty-eight point nine six. Um, and that, I, I like that because then like this opposite, this side that's opposite is bigger than that side that's opposite. And this angle is bigger than that angle. And then I could get C by just going 180 minus those other two. And then I would, I would have them all. Great. So that is law of cosines. Um, you're going to combine it with law of sines sometimes when you're solving triangles. Um, just one, one tip while you practice is if you can save, um, the longest for last, <laughs> in other words, if you can avoid, um, finding what should be the largest angle to last, you're going to have, uh, least likely to have some sort of error 
if you ever have to inverse sign. So that's just a tip. You don't have to do it, but it just kind of uh, saves you a little bit of a headache. All right, post questions in the forum, send them, message them to me. Have fun with this chapter.